You are listening to Book Clips, a mini podcast in which authors or narrators do readings from novels. Check out the show notes for the synopsis and buy links for this book. Hi, I'm KJ, and today I'll be doing a reading from my novel, Linda Swim. Andrea glanced fondly at the polished brass plate on the outside of Lauren's surgery, remembering the first time Lauren had shown her and Hannah around the surgery a month after they'd become friends. And that's what you're doing, you're apologising to a friend, first and foremost, Andrea thought. A bell sounded with the opening of the door, and Emily looked up from her computer. A bright smile spread across her face, and she sat back in her chair. Hey, Andrea, I haven't seen you in ages. You got a day off? Andrea crossed the reception area to the desk, leaning her hip against the edge. Hi, Emily. Yeah, a bit of a day off, I guess. She tilted her head and looked carefully. You're looking fantastic. Andrea grinned, the dimple in her cheek showing. A blush crept up Emily's neck and she skittered her gaze around the room, away from the gorgeous features of her boss's best friend. Bloody hell, Andrea. Look at me getting all silly about a compliment. You're as bad as a Lauren at making me blush like that. Andrea laughed. It's true, though. Then she felt the stirring of nerves in her body. Speaking of Lauren, has she got a minute? Oh, sure. She's on lunch out in the courtyard. Just go on through. She smiled. I'll just be here pretending I'm not blushing at compliments from beautiful lesbians. Andrea snorted and shared a grin with Emily before making her way down the corridor to the little courtyard at the back. The corridor was lined with framed photos of Lauren cuddling, holding, or standing next to various pets, their grateful owners grinning beside her. She paused at one snapshot, Lauren's smile impossibly wide, eyes twinkling, as she pressed the side of her face to an outrageously ugly, scowling cat. Andrea smiled as she recognised Tony. She stared a moment longer at the pure delight in Lauren's beautiful face, and drowned in the dark of her eyes. Lauren finished the last bite of her sandwich, crushed the paper wrapping into a ball, and wedged it into the empty mug that sat on the top of the courtyard table. She sat forward in her chair, pulling her shoulders back, and stretched her arms. Hi. A voice, one that Lauren recognised immediately, spoke softly from the open French doors. Lauren dropped her arms and turned to face Andrea. Hi. Lauren's face was impassive. Andrea pulled the woolen hat off her head, causing her hair to fly around erratically. She hesitated at the door, clutching her hat in her hands, and Lauren quietly contemplated her friend. How odd to see someone actually apologising, holding their hat in their hands, just like the old saying. Andrea was noticeably exhausted, pale, in defiance of the wind, which had tried to add colour to her cheeks. There were dark circles under her eyes. Despite all that, Lauren thought Andrea was beautiful standing there in her white pullover, her jeans, the ones made by elves, and her black boots. It took all of Lauren's willpower to not snap Andrea up in her arms and bury her face in her hair. Do you want to sit? Lauren indicated the extra chair at the table. Andrea's smile was uncertain and fleeting as she pulled the seat out and sank into it, dropping her hat onto the tabletop. Her eyes, dark brown and gorgeous, filled with tears, but Lauren held her gaze evenly. I'm sorry. Andrea's eyes were wide, her remorse clearly obvious. I- I'm so sorry, Lauren. She breathed deeply, trying valiantly to recover her emotions. You didn't deserve to be told that, that our night together, that, that you were, she breathed, that our wonderful night was, was like a service agreement that was unspeakably unkind. Lauren watched as Andrea swallowed heavily. I was just... Andrea let the sentence fade. There was no excuse for what she'd done. I was wrong, and I'm sorry. I know that this doesn't take away the hurt you feel. I can't ever take it back or undo it, although I wish with all my heart I could. Her face had impossibly become even more pale. So, she twisted her hands in her lap. I know it's unlikely that you'll forgive me for what I said, and I don't blame... I do forgive you. Lauren's husky voice brought Andrew to a halt. Lauren stood up and wandered a few steps away from the table, tracing the cobblestone lines with her toe and poking at the moss. What? Lauren let her beak go by. You heard me. 
She shoved her hands into her pockets, standing side on to Andrea. Why? Lauren shifted to face Andrew, who was sitting bolt upright, clearly bewildered. She paused. Because, oh shit, Andrea, I know why you said it, that's why. Lauren had suddenly raised her voice, and she brought her hands out of her pockets to cut through the air in erratic slices. God, Andrea, I'm not going to pretend that what you said didn't hurt, because crap, did it ever. She started to pace, then she whirled around to face Andrea. But I do forgive you. Her voice was strained. I really do, because I know what you were doing when you said it. Andrea leaned back in her chair and raised a trembling hand to her mouth. Her eyes were huge. I get that your mum's in hospital. I know that's really stressful. Lauren's hand chopped through the air like punctuation. I know you work crazy stupid hours in a job you love but don't especially like. I know that your sister is a religious fuckwit who's made your life awful. She dropped her arms to her side and looked at Andrea. And our night together... That amazing, incredible, wonderful night, Andrea, that night where you were so present that you suddenly saw a possible future, that night, the very idea of an us terrified you so much, so much, the only way you could handle it was to push me away. You basically said, piss off, Lauren, because big emotions like these are too scary for me to handle. Andrea was no longer able to contain her tears. They were streaming down her cheeks, her hand desperately trying to swat them away. Lauren was silent, watching Andrea cry with one arm wrapped around her stomach. She walked to her chair, pulled it around in front of Andrea, and sat, and reached out to hold Andrea's hands. Lauren waited until she looked up, blinking away tears. I know you think you've lost your best friend. She gave Andrea a crooked smile. Andrea hesitated. Haven't I? Lauren frowned and then glared. No, you haven't. God! She rolled her eyes and lightly shook Andrea's hands in her own. Andrea, do you want to know something? I have always loved you as a best friend. That's not up for debate. But here's the thing, she paused. I have always been in love with you. The idea of an us is mind-blowing and so bloody awesome and thrills me beyond words. That's why last Friday night was amazing. Andrea stared at Lauren, her mouth open. I've always loved you, Andrea, and now you know I'm in love with you and that hasn't changed no matter what has happened. Lauren's eyes were blazing as she repeated her words. Her hands tightened around Andrea's. But Andrea, I won't be your fuck buddy. Andrea flinched, nearly jerking her hands out of Lauren's grip. I want all of you, you know, the whole lot. She let go of Andrea's hands. I want the idea of an us, but it has to be the whole shebang, okay? like we showed to each other on Friday. But at the moment, there's no room for an us. She tapped a finger on Andrea's forehead. In there. I... Andrea's voice croaked and she tried again. I really like the idea of an us as well. Her smile wobbled. Really, really. Lauren leaned back in her seat and crossed her arms. You have to like the idea of a you first. Andrea nodded in agreement a tiny smile making its way more firmly onto her face. She looked at her lap. I know what you're talking about. I'm not very good at being me, so how can I be good at being us? Her voice was so low that Lauren had to strain to hear it. She pointed a finger. Yep. Andrea's breath shuddered. I can do that. F find me. I mean, like me. Myself. I, I can. She began slowly nodding. Okay. She took another breath. Okay. Yes. You've been listening to me, KJ, doing a reading from my novel, Learning to Swim. You have been listening to Book Clips. Check out the show notes for the synopsis and buy links for this book. If you are interested in showcasing your novel, then check out the show notes for more information.